What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving to Adrian Broadway, America. Adrian Broadway is a young lady in Arkansas who got shot in the head by by a homeowner who came out at one in the morning and saw his car being vandalized. Eggs, mayonnaise, and all that stuff. Here's the thing. She was 15, by the way. This is why well, I call it that the, the Adrian Broadway America. People want to. I know people gonna want to spin this into Jordan Davis. I know people are gonna spin this into Trayvon Martin. I mean, people might reverse spin this into Oscar Grant. I, uh, people gonna spin this. And my my take on it is this: if you egg somebody's car one in the morning. The boom, they don't, if they don't remember what eggs sound like in the middle of the night hitting a car, you're going to think they got something. So if you come out at 1 in the morning, you still ain't, mm, you, you just getting up. Somebody waking you, boom, boom. It's like somebody banging on your door at 1 in the morning. you probably going to come with your gun. I'm just saying. You're going to figure out what's going on, and you're going to come with your gun. I'm just saying. Well, you're going to come with your gun, then you're going to figure out what's going on. Rather, the problem I have with that is this: some people swear that every situation is the same when it's not, and some people swear that everybody's a victim when everybody's not. And we let people off the hook. Let me explain. You're not supposed to have your 15-year-old out at 1 in the morning as a parent. That's not a good parent. A 15-year-old girl, that's worse. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's worse because the plethora of things that can happen to her is worse. Don't you see all these little missing girls going around? They're missing kids everywhere. But... You get these missing girls go around who get raped, who get kidnapped, who get sold into sex trafficking, who get pimped. But you're willing to just let your 15-year-old girl just go out and do shit? Like, that's not a good idea as a parent. Just as, just person to person. That's not a good idea from any parent. Um, if it was a guy, it's still not a good parent because it's 1 in the morning and they're 15. Uh, the other thing is you don't know who you're dealing with. Like, kids do dumb shit. I will give you, granted, granted, kids do dumb shit. And some of the dumb shit kids do can get them killed because you don't know who you're dealing with. And everybody's not a victim. You see, this is different from Trayvon Martin. This is different from uh, Jordan Davis, this is different from Renisha McBride, this is different from Rakia Boyd. I mean, I named black people along all of those things, but it's still different. This is different from the, the, the guy that got shot in the movie theater by the ex-cop. They're all different situations and scenarios. The problem is, don't... <laughs> There are people out there who feel like, you know, unless you feel threatened, violence is never the answer. And the problem with that is, is on one people, on one end, people fake like they're threatened. People just fake like they feel threatened to go off. That's They've been waiting on an excuse to, to do some, some irrest, irreprehensible type stuff. And when they find that excuse, they just run to it and they hide behind it. That's the George Zimmerman and Michael Dunn thing, you know. And then there are other people who, like, look, yo, like the cop that shot the kid in Chicago, that's waiting until, you know, you got the threat. The problem with that is, is that kid could have just walked up and blew his head off and drove off in a car. You don't necessarily... You, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you wait until you're dead to know you have to defend yourself. 
So this is like right in the middle to me, you know. But because it's one o'clock in the morning, I don't feel like there's no victims here. Like if somebody came banging on my, banging with shit in my house at one in the morning, I probably would not come out. Let me figure this out. Let me put my, let me get my detective gear. Let me see what's going on here. No, I'm like, it's one o'clock in the morning. Obviously, you up to no good. Now, if you rung my doorbell at one o'clock in the morning, I give you a pass. If you knocked on my door at one in the morning, I'm going to still have my gun, but I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to see, I'm going to have a gun behind the door so you don't see it. So if you try some shit, I'm going to blow your head off. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> but, you know, but at the same token, if you just out fucking with my home and my and stuff and my cars and, you know, that shit, I'm going to think you're trying to steal from me. Like, I have friends, I had somebody park their car, a friend of mine parked their car in front of my house. Uh, and they went out and they came back and they had the alarm blasted. Like, they just left the alarm go. And I didn't know they came back to my house. But I was here. So I come outside. Because when the alarm goes off a little too long, you think somebody's messing with a car. So I come outside, locked and loaded, or whatever. And they get shook. Now, this is an adult, okay? And in their mind, it didn't register to them that, oh, maybe I shouldn't have my alarm going off two, three minutes in a row if I'm standing right next to the car. Because maybe somebody in the inside might he might think they're probably trying to steal my car. So I scared the shit out of them. But it it came across from inside of my home like a burglary on the outside of my home. So that's how I reacted to it. So I'm not, you know, <laughs> toilet paper in somebody's house is different because you don't necessarily hear toilet paper. You wake up in the morning like, ain't this a bitch? But if you hear boof, boof, banging on the windows, or eggs on the windows, sometimes it come across like rocks. You know, if you're hearing that on your car, sometimes it'll come across like rocks or gunshots. You know, just not big gunshots. But, you know, so you might just go from zero to 60. Now, I don't feel like at the end of the day, we got to stop excusing bad behavior. And I really feel like it's unfortunate this young lady died. It's unfortunate, unfortunate this guy killed her. But if he goes to jail, which he probably will, that girl's parents and that girl's friend's parents that they was with need to go to jail too. Because there's no reason to have your kid that's 15 out at 1 in the morning. There's no reason to have them with kids old, old enough to drive out that late at night in the first place with your car. That's just, it's just not a good idea. And everybody's going to put the responsibility on this guy because he was the one with the gun, and I get that. But those people involved in the entire situation, he's the scapegoat for all of their reckless idiotic behavior and that's the that's the the, the 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 America I'm talking about you got a group of people doing reckless idiotic behavior and you fuck with the wrong person and then it's that person's fault it's not that person's actual fault it's all of your collective dumb mindsets combined creating a powder cake All it needed was a fuse. No, I'm, my bad. It needed just a light. You put the fuse there too. So, you know, that's just how I feel about it, man. Peace.